Hello. In this lecture, we want to talk about an example to illustrate the use of past baton. The example we're going to use to discuss is again the reader writer problem. We develop a solution, a fairer solution, or a better solution than the previous ones. Then gradually improve it by the use of past the baton technique. So in this example, we shall use the reader priority version of the reader's writer's problem. And uh, we need to have some additional conditions. The first one is, of course, the old friend. If there is no writer writing, a reader can read. The second one in red is the new one. If there is no reader reading and there are waiting writers allowed a writer to write. In our first solution, uh, if there's no reader reading and there are waiting writers, when that writer's semaphore is signaled, we have no way to guarantee whether the writer or the new reader will be allowed to enter. So this is a new condition. The next one, if there are readers reading or a writer writing, no writer can write. Old condition. Now the next two are also new. If there are waiting readers, a finishing writer should allow the reader to read. In other words, suppose we have a writer writing because writing must be done in a mutually exclusive way. No reader can read. So all of those readers are blocked. So when this writer finishes its writing, it must allow the reader to read. In our previous version, if there are reader reading, uh, if there are waiting readers and a finishing writer should allow a reader to read, well, remember this. We use a single semaphore to block readers and uh, writers. So in our original version, when that semaphore is signaled, we are not sure whether a reader or a writer would be released. So in this version, we separate it. So in this case, when a writer finishes writing, we give a reader to read. Now, if there are waiting writers and no waiting readers, a finishing writer should allow the writer to write. Therefore, these two conditions is a separation. Uh, from the readers and writers. In other words, when a writer finishes the work, if there are waiting readers, we allow the reader to go. If there are no waiting readers and there are waiting writers, we allow the writer to go. So we have four additional conditions. In the following, we will develop the entry section exit section for the reader and also the entry section and the uh, exit section for the writers. Now, because we have to count uh, readers and writers separately, remember the last two conditions, when a writer finishes, it must know whether we have a waiting readers and whether we have waiting writers. So we have to count writers. So we have some counter here, we have say A reader, A writers. A means active. So A readers indicates how many readers are reading. It's always greater than or equal to zero. 
A writers means the number of writers writing. Of course, it's either zero or one. Now, readers and writers with a prefix W means waiting. So W readers means the number of waiting readers. W writers means the number of waiting writers. Now, because readers and the writers um, may update one of these four counters, we need some semaphore to protect it. We use a single semaphore mutex to protect all four counters. You may want to say, would that be good enough? Yes. So in the next few slides, you'll learn how this can be done. And we use this reader semaphore to block readers if that reader cannot read. We use a writer semaphore to block writers if writers cannot write. So the initial value of this readers and writer would be zero. And uh, for protection purpose, mutex would be initialized to one, allowing at least uh, at the most one of the readers or writer to go. Now, Let's develop the uh, entry section for readers. It's a bit long, but once you know the logic, the remaining uh, sections will be rather easy. So as we mentioned, we need a mutex to protect all counters. Here uh, we have increments of the, the waiting readers and uh, we have active readers and uh, waiting readers. So here, before a reader can do anything, this reader must lock the counters. So test to see whether a reader, there are waiting uh, writers and in increase the value of waiting readers. And now if it has to wait, release the mutex. And when it comes back, lock it again in order to access a reader and a W reader. So in the next few slides, we will explain the details here. So here, what we need to know is the uh, mutex semaphore is used to protect the access to this variable, this variable, this variable, this variable. Then we dig into the if statement. Now we assume that this reader successfully locks the mutex. So what this reader must do is it's check to see uh, their writer's writing. That is if the active writer is greater than zero. In that case, a writer is writing. If there's no writer writing, it means this reader can read. Therefore, it will skip the then part and go to here. So here, because there's no writers writing, so this reader can read at one to active readers and check to see are there any waiting readers. Could be, why? Because when this reader comes in, the previous writer just finished writing. And while that finishing writer was working on writing, there could be other readers blocked. So in this case, add one to active readers and check to see are there any waiting readers. If there are, then release one of them by calling signal reader here. I will explain this here later. So if there are waiting readers, subtract one from the waiting and release that reader. When it's done, release the lock. And if there is no waiting readers and this reader is the only one that try to access the database, so definitely this one has to release the lock for the next reader or the next writer to have access to these variables. Now get back to this part. When a reader comes in, it locks the mutex in order to access all four variables. 
Now, if there are active writers, that is A writers one, then this reader must wait. So this reader at one to the waiting readers, release the lock and then block the solve by waiting on the semaphore reader. Now notice here, this reader has to release the lock. You cannot wait reader, move this wait reader up to here. If you do that, the mutex will never be released and no one can signal uh, this reader. So let's go through it again. If there is a writer writing, this reader must wait. Therefore, at one to the waiting readers and release the lock and immediately block this out because it cannot read. Now, when this reader is released from somewhere, at least we know it could be here. So when this reader is released, it means it can read. Therefore, this reader has to reacquire the mutex. And then goes here, increase the reader count and so on. So let's quickly go through this uh, intersection. A reader locks the mutex in order to access those counters. And if there is no writers writing, then this reader can immediately start reading here. So to go here at one, this reader adds one to a reader, check to see whether there are waiting readers. If there are no waiting readers, it simply release the lock and start reading. And if there are waiting readers, then subtract one from the waiting reader count and signal the reader, allowing one to go. So this part is pretty easy. I'll get back to here. If there is a writer writing, this reader must wait. So that at one to waiting readers, release the lock and block the solve by waiting on the reader shamafo. When this reader is released from the semaphore reader, it has to reacquire the lock in order for this reader to access a reader and test and uh, manipulate uh, wait, the number of waiting writers. So this is mm, a bit more complex than the previous versions, but still manageable. Then let's move on. There's something very interesting. Probably you have already noticed that. Um, let me quickly go through this up to here. Now, if there is a writer writing at one to the number of waiting readers and release the lock and then block this off because it cannot read. So when this reader is released, it must reacquire the lock. Now, if a reader can reach here, either there's no writing writers, or it has gone through all of these steps and released by someone from semaphore reader. So if a reader can reach here, then it is either released from this reader semaphore, or if there's no writer writing. Only two way, if it goes skip the then part, it means there's no writer writing. If it has gone through here, here and blocks and released, it means there was a writer writing, but now there's no writer writing. So this reader can read. Then let's look at something very interesting. This is what I said. If a reader can reach is here, it means either there's no writer writing or there was a writer writing and then uh, this reader was released from this reader semaphore due to other readers are reading or the writer release it. So it reacquired the mutex. Now, what if when this reader gets here, 
it finds out, oh, there are waiting readers. If this reader can reach here, it means no writer writing. Therefore, it simply checks to see, are there any waiting readers? If there are, subtract one from it, and then signal this reader. So one of the reader is released. Now, when this reader is released, it must reacquire the mutex, right? But for this reader who signals this uh, weight reader, this reader still has the mutex because it hasn't reached here yet. So this released reader, even though it is released, it still cannot get the mutex until this releasing uh, reader executes signal mutex. So once this reader exit, this reader, the released reader from the uh, reader semaphore, get the mutex. And then uh, it does everything and then release the next one. The next one cannot continue until this one exit by calling the signal. So this is a key component. We will explain it more here. Remember the this reader, it just executed wait, a signal to the reader. This one cannot get to here until the signaling thread executing here and exit. So when this exit, the next reader comes in, acquires the mutex and manipulate all variable. And if there are still readers and it signals the reader semaphore again. And then this reader exit, the next reader comes in. So in this way, release one, this one continue and release the next one and continue, release the next one and so on. So the rating readers here will be released one by one. One. This is a cascading signal and release. Now, let's uh, step back a few steps. Remember, we discussed the roller coaster problem. In the roller coaster problem, at the uh, uh, at the end, the roller coaster car signals a passenger asking the passenger to get out. Then that passenger gets out and then signals to the car saying that I'm gone. You may allow the next one to go. So in that way, we use a uh, for loop to do that. Remember that? So think about this. Can you apply the pattern here to the roller coaster problem? One passenger, when, they, when it gets off, signal next one, so keep going until there's no passengers on board. I hope you could at least try to figure out a way similar to this. And this is why we, when we discussed the uh, uh, roller coaster problem, we make it very specific that there are multiple ways to do that. We did that way on purpose. Just want to illustrate one possibility. So now you learned a second one. So here's the summary. Let's quickly go through it. A reader acquires the mutex. And if there's no writer writing, it simply goes here. And if there are some readers waiting, uh, then we release them in a cascading way. So the first thread acquires the baton, the mutex. We'd go down here, release the next one, the next one, and next one. So you know when this reader who executes the signal 
reader semaphore. It has the baton. So when this signal release this reader, this reader won't be able to get the baton because the releasing thread still has it. So until this releasing thread is able to call signal mutex, this reader will simply wait here. Then this reader get the baton and does everything it has to do, including this signal. So before the second reader can reach here, the third reader would be blocked here. So in this way, immediately, you may want to say, why don't we simply pass the baton, that is the mutex, from this releasing reader to the reader gets released here. This is exactly what we intend to do. So remember this, when I signal this reader, this reader gets my baton. I simply, I just don't release it. I simply pass the baton to the just release reader. And this reader, of course, because it received the baton from me, it does not have to execute this wait. So this cascading release, signal release, signal release goes on and on until there is no, the last reader gets released from here, it tests, oh, there's no waiting readers. And this one does not have to release any readers from the reader semaphore. Therefore, this one simply released the baton. So let's quickly go through it again. A thread comes in and it may be blocked here until this thread can execute here, then that means there's no writer writing. And if there are some readers waiting, signal the first one. And after signaling the next reader, this one simply goes away. So the baton gives the, the second reader, uh, the first waiting reader of the first released reader. It has the baton and goes down a signal. So release the second waiting reader and keep going on and on. Every thread, as long as it sees there are waiting readers, after passing the baton to the next reader released, this reader goes away. But eventually you'll, you will be able to release every waiting readers here. Then the last reader gets released. It will find out there will be no waiting reader. In that case, this last reader simply released the baton. So, a bit more complex, but illustrates a very interesting concept uh, while we are discussing how we develop a, a version without considering baton passing. If you dig further, you'll find out there could be some place where we could say whole lot of weights cause and signal cause. So before you continue, I hope uh, you stop a pause for a while and uh, study these several slides until you really understand how the baton is passed uh, from a signaling reader to a released reader. So please pause. This lecture is short. We have finished a quarter of it. So there's no reason to rush because this is an important technique. Now let's consider the exit section for readers. Remember, we add a few more conditions there. So this is the exit section without considering baton passing. So upon exit, this reader locks 
the mutex. Because this reader exits, so it has to reduce the number of active readers. After reducing the active readers, it checks to see are there any reader reading? That is, test to see whether active reader is zero. I did not use double uh, equal sign because I don't have a space to do that. So make sure this is not an assignment. This is just a testing. So test to see if there is no active reader. So in that case, this is the reader who is testing it is the last reader reading. And uh, are there any waiting writers? So this condition is true if I am the last reader and there are waiting writers. In this case, of course, we need to release a writer. So we subtract one from the waiting writers and uh, release the mutex and then signal the writing semaphore, allowing a writer to proceed. How am I so sure when I execute this uh, signal, a writer will be released? Well, that's simply because the waiting writer is greater than zero. So if this condition is a false, then it means either we, we still have readers reading or there's no waiting writers. So this reader simply released the mutex. So it is very simple. Again, an exiting reader locks the mutex in order to access counters. First thing first, it subtract one, subtracts one from the active readers and check to see are there any active readers? If there's no active readers and there are some waiting writers, we allow one waiting writer to go. So subtract one from waiting writers and uh, release the mutex and signals the writer semaphore, allowing a semaphore to go, allowing a writer to go. And if there are still active readers, or there is no waiting writers. This exiting reader has nothing to do. It just released the mutex. So this portion is pretty easy. Hope you understand this. Then let's take a look at how we can apply the concept of baton passing. So here again, uh, subject one from the active readers. And uh, if there is no active readers and there are waiting writers, subject one from it. Now, because this exit reader is the last reader and when it can be here, it has already acquired the button. So this exiting reader has the mutex. So this reader simply gives the mutex to the released writer. This is simple. So in, that, in this case, the released writer does not have to execute a wait on mutex. So this is very, very simple. Again, if there is no active reader, but there are waiting writers, simply subtract one from the waiting writers and give that release writer the baton. The remaining would all the same. So study this version. I, I think everybody should have no trouble in understanding why the signal can be uh, removed. Now consider this. Would this version work properly in terms of passing the baton? That is previously in the, in the version without baton passing, we have an else here, but can we remove this else in this way? Think about it. This is a rather simple exercise. So, if you, if you want, please pause and uh, uh, 
before you understand the exit section for the readers, please pause. Now, we get to the writers. Remember, the last two sections says, upon exit, a writer should release a reader. If there are reader reading, or if there's no readers, then we release a writer. So it's still a sort of a, a reader priority version as we mentioned. So let's take a look at the entry section of the writer. So the writer again, of course, it has to lock the mutex in order to access all counters. So this writer checks to see if there are active readers. If there are active readers, this writer, of course, cannot write. Or are there any writers writing? If there is a writer writing, this writer cannot write. So this condition means this writer check to see if there are readers reading or there is a writer writing. This writer must wait. So the next few statements are the same as the reader's entry section. At one to the waiting writers, release the new text and then block the south on the semaphore writer. Then when it is released from a reader, it has to reacquire the new text and then get to here. And if this condition fails, that is uh, this one is false and this one is false. This one is false means no active reader. This one is false means there's no active writer. So this writer of course can write. So this writer at one to the active writer and released new text and start writing. So the meaning of this section is when a writer comes, if there is, is no reader reading and there is no writer writing, then it can write immediately. As a result, this writer at one to active writer release the mutex and then start reading. If there are reading readers, this reader, this writer can write. And or if there is a writer writing, this writer cannot write either. So in that case, this writer must wait. So it at one to the waiting writer count. Release the mutex and block this solve on the semaphore right. When this writer is released either by a writer or by a reader, it must reacquire the mutex in order to access the active writer count. So very simple, is it? So please pause before uh, we get to uh, how to use pass the baton technique. So this is the exit section for the reader. Remember, a reader could release a writer. So in this case, when this reader was baton passing, signal writers, this reader did not release the new text. So when this reader signals this writer, the release writer would get the baton. Of course, it does not have to acquire it. This is that's this simple. Hopefully you understand this. Otherwise, please pause. Now, finally, let's develop the exit section for the writer. It's more complex because of the additional two conditions discussed on the first slide of this lecture. So upon exit, a writer acquires the mutex and uh, 
because this writer finishes writing. So subtract one from the active writer. Now, after doing that, it, if there are waiting readers, allow one to go. And if there is no waiting readers, and if there are waiting writers, allow the waiting writer to go. If there's no waiting readers and there's no waiting writers, well, this exiting writer simply release the new text. So this part and this part are symmetric. If there are waiting re readers, one of them would be allowed to go. So subtract one from the number of waiting readers and release the mutex and uh, signal the reader. For the writers, if there are waiting writers, subtract one from the waiting writers, release the mutex and uh, signal the writer semaphore. So this is very uh, trivial because it's just a direct translation from the condition. So how do we apply baton passing? Remember, we could remove this because when this exiting reader gets the mutex, it executes this, this, and this. So it still has the baton. So when this exiting writer signal, uh, signals a, re, uh, when this exiting writer allows a reader to go, who this reader of course was blocked by the reader's semaphore. So it just give that reader its baton. So the same reason here. So as you can see, we use several slides to explain the concept when we design and develop the uh, entry section for the readers. Once you know the logic behind that, all the remaining sections are pretty easy. So here we have a slide that summarize all the possible baton passing. And this is the second one. So I hope after studying all of these uh, slides and go through these two slides again. And make sure you understand all the baton passing pattern. Then we're going to do something more. We haven't reached a writer priority version yet. So let's try a little bit for the development of a writer priority version. Will that be very complex? Not at all, really easy. If you understand uh, what I said in the previous slides, the development of a writer priority version is really easy. So a writer priority version sh should satisfy the following conditions. New readers are blocked if a writer is waiting. That is, if there is a writer waiting to write, all new readers must be blocked. Then the second one is, a waiting reader is released if there's no writer is writing. So in this way, we are not in favor of the readers because if there is a writer writing or newcomers, I mean, the readers would be blocked. A waiting reader is released if there's no writer is writing. So this is a writer priority version. If the pattern of the coming writers one by one oh, with some overlapping, well, the reader could be uh, starved. Okay, so to meet the condition one, we must change the entry section of the if statement to this one. If there is active writers or there are waiting readers. This reader must wait. This is simple. This means when a reader comes in, if there are 
active writers, of course, it has to wait. Or if there are waiting writers, this reader must wait as well. Simple, right? Now let's take a look at the second one. The second uh, condition requires to modify the exit section. That is to uh, modify the if statement of the writer thread. Previously, the writer only tests to see whether there are waiting readers. If there are, we allow them to go. But now, because it's writer priority, we also check to see are there any waiting writers. Okay, so here it means if we have waiting readers and uh, there is no waiting writers, then we allow reader to go. Now, if we are here, it means we have writing uh, waiting writers, then we allow a writer to go. Otherwise, we do nothing simply release the mutex. So, isn't it very simple? So, the, this complete lecture simply try to tell you you don't need to have a very complex logic to solve a rather complex problem, okay? And also illustrate that after develop, after your solution is developed, try to study it further and dig deeper, and hopefully you'll find places where baton passing can be applied. Now, Let's move further. We try to develop a fair version. By fair version, in the reader's reader writer version, when we have overlapping readers, writer could be stopped. In the writer priority version, if the writer comes in in an overlapping way, reader could be stopped. So a fair version means we should allow readers and writers take turns. In this way, no reader nor writers would be stopped. So here we have to make some assumption on the semaphore. We assume that a semaphore being used is implemented so that every block thread will be eventually released. That is no starvation. If a thread is blocked there, then uh, with proper signals, that thread will eventually be released. How will you be able to achieve this? Well, the easiest way would be you implement the semaphore in a first in, first out order. In that way, no one will be uh, stopped as long as your signal pattern is always correct. But there's no guarantee a system of semaphore you are using will be implemented that way. So a fair version must satisfy the following. When a writer finishes, all waiting readers get a turn. That is when a writer finishes, uh, all waiting readers could run. When all current readers finish reading, one waiting writer can write. So this is the meaning of taking turns. So we need to do some modification. So here we need to change the last exit of the writer. We add a Boolean variable writing to indicate whether a writer is writing. Writing is set to true when a writer starts writing and is set to false when a reader starts reading. When a, start, when a reader start reading, it means there's no writer writing. So it's funny, writing this variable indicating whether there is a writer writing is set to true by a writer, but it's set to false by, a, by the first reader. So what we need to modify this, uh, in the uh, uh, if statement exit section of the writer, 
if there are waiting readers and uh, here this condition has to be true we have no waiting writers or no one is writing so we release a reader now we also make the second else if more complicated if there are waiting writers and this condition is true what does that mean it means that there's no waiting readers or no one is writing that is it so when we get here it means there's no waiting readers and no waiting writers now Think about this question after this lecture. It requires some thinking. Why is the starvation free assumption about a semaphore needed? Think about it. Okay, so the modification is so simple. But you need to justify that the semaphore implementation for the readers and for the writer must be implemented in a starvation free way. You may assume that it's foreseen for stuff, although there could be some other way to do that. Say timing and something. Um, we, in operating system, we may call it aging. When you wait, uh, we have a priority. We have a priority queue, something like that. When you wait there long enough your pri your priority gets higher and higher every time when a signal comes we release the, the one with the highest priority you will learn this technique in an operating system class which i won't be uh, digging more here so this complete example including its extension and the past the baton pattern is due to a well-known researcher in concurrent programming and Gregory Andrews. He published two very interesting uh, things. The first one is book, concurrent programming principles and uh, practice. When you get this, this book is very well written. The problem is Andrews did not use the common syntax. Actually, he used a very commonly used uh, uh, user, uh, syntax in theoretical discussion. And this paper is also worthwhile to read. A method for solving synchronization problem. Not only uh, the baton passing pattern is discussed, but also other synchronization techniques with other examples. The, uh, our library does not have this journal, but you could use interlibrary loan to get a copy for you for free. So get this paper and when you have time, read it. You will feel that you will be enlightened. So this is the last slides of this lecture. The remaining two lectures, the first one is uh, we talk about how to use semaphore under Fermenter. The last lecture of this very long uh, semaphore discussion is a demo of Fermenter. So let me stop here. See you next time. Goodbye.